Hey, this is uh, Mr. Nagy's uh, physics class. Welcome, and uh, hopefully I've given you a little bit of an overview on what you need to do in this class. Uh, some of the course outlines, classroom expectations, stuff like that I've started going over with you in class. Um, and here I'm going to do a little on our very first uh, unit in both Physics 11 and Physics 12. We really need to have math skills. Math is the language of physics. So math being the language of science, language of physics uh, specifically, but any science is that. It is a language that you learn. You need, to, you need to understand how it works to express things quantitatively. And that is right, I am dealing with quantities, quantitative. And, you know, stuff like that. We're going to collect and describe to others what's going on. I mean, that's what physics is all about. What's going on in the world? What's going on in the universe? What's going on in, in macroscopically, really large things? Again, uh, studying the universe or microscopically, what's going on within the world of an atom? Uh, you need to learn English skills. You know, it, both different classes, both with different purposes, to communicate to others things like emotions. Right in English, you're going to talk about uh, emotive writing and, and how that all gets along, um, gets across. So, you know, that would be qualitative. It's important that you have skills in both. Right, qualitative. Um, here's an uh, an example of a of a car ad. This one here is for a, a GMC truck, uh, kind of a cute little heading on it, underwear, gum, trucks, things that are better new, clearly. So a typical car ad is going to have some um, qualitative language. It's going to say, you know, this truck, beautiful black, uh, you can see yourself in the doors and so on, sleek lines, those are all qualitative. Uh, car ads would also have quantitative data. This truck has excellent mileage. It has, you know, uh, 20 miles per gallon. Sorry, I'm stuck on uh, imperial measurements. It goes from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in so many seconds. It's got so many horsepower. Those are all quantitative data that are presented to you in a car ad and there's also you know kind of a English language thing that's presented to you in a car ad so we need to be fluent in both you can see here the cartoon on the left hand side uh, the newscaster saying 64% of people prefer English and 32% of students prefer math they don't add up and that may explain why people don't realize that you need 100% of people there um, so we need to be comfortable with the language of, of, uh, of mathematics, in particular algebra. That's uh, one of our absolute basic skills. As we get into physics 12, we're going to use trigonom trigonometry and, and other such things. Um, but algebra is kind of our basic way of manipulating numbers. That's really all it is, manipulating Uh, numbers. Numbers, of course, represent quantities. So how do we manipulate them? How do we have them express whatever data we may have collected and so on? So I've got here the golden rule of algebra that I picked up off just off the internet there. And it says, do unto one side of the equation what you do to the other. Whoops. Do unto one side of the equation what you do to the other. And that's it. It's just that simple. Um, We've got here, there's kind of an order here, uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, uh, exponents. If there were brackets, they would be in there too, although we kind of be a little careful with that. Sometimes you've probably seen this in math class as bed mass, order of operations. Now when we're manipulating things, we're kind of doing reverse bed mass. See, there's our adding, subtracting, and they're at the beginning here, as you read right, left to right dividing, multiplying their next, and so on, and then some of your more complex math, uh, uh, mathematical operations go to the end. So let's take a look at a really simple formula, the type that you see in math class all the time. You, you manipulate things. I often like to say that uh, in math class, it's a lot like, of course, I'm a, I'm a hockey guy too. Um, math is like hockey practice or the equivalent to... to um, a science as hockey practices to the sport of hockey. Math is practice. 
And so oftentimes you learn certain skills without understanding where these skills are going to be applied. In hockey, I have my, 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 my um, athletes will be skating around pylons and so on. It's not a, a, something you're going to do in a hockey game. The ultimate goal is to be very good in a hockey game. But in math, you're going to manipulate things without any idea where the data or where the numbers came from. We use sort of generic variables. In, in hockey, we're going to have the students uh, skate around pylons. In math, they're going to use things like y and x or a, b, and c. So uh, you've probably seen this equation in math class, y equals mx plus b. It describes um, uh, data which falls into a straight line on a graph. Let's put some numbers in here for uh, m and b, which would be the slope and the, and the y-intercept on this uh, slope-intercept form of an equation. Again, it's a form of equation. The data happens to take a particular shape, so you always kind of describe it with this sort of a math thing. We've got to be really careful here. We're not going to use forms of equations in class. We're going to use actual equations that describe actual data. So what if this thing said y equals 3x plus 12? And we wanted to figure out what x value would work in order for all of this uh, or we want to solve the equation for x, if you will. We want to manipulate it. We want to change things around. So as I said here, whatever we do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. And we're going to do it in kind of this order. So we want to isolate x right here. Um, first, x is part of this term. We've got 3x plus 12. And this would be another term in the equation. We need to get rid of this term that's added to the x. So I'm going to take and simply subtract 12. So we've got a, a subtraction there and as I do that to one side I have to do that to the other side. So ultimately what I get here is y equals 3x plus 12 minus 12. Another way I like to describe algebra is, is maintaining a balance, right? It's like a set of balance scales if you will, right? And we need to keep that balance. The equal sign is the balance. And if I add stuff to one side and I add it to the other, do the same to the other, I maintain that equality. If I take away or take away, I maintain that equality. If I double whatever I've got in that side and double in that side, I keep my equality. That's why whatever you do to one side of the equation, you've got to do to the other. So um, another thing here in physics that you've had you know, 10, 11 years of math already, uh, you don't necessarily need to show all the steps that I'm showing right here. I'm going into the small detail, some of you, and, and we're all at different skill levels, just like in hockey, right? I'm coaching a team, everybody's got their own skill level, and you're going to put whatever you need to to, to achieve that goal of making it through the pylons. You may need to show all these steps, and that's absolutely fine. You may not need to show your your, your level, your cognitive level in, in, in this aspect. You may not need to show all the steps. You may just solve it for x. A good bet to do it this way, but... Uh, I typically wouldn't show all these steps. So now 12 minus 12 is 0, and I don't usually write down plus 0 or minus 0 or anything else like that. Uh, 0 has no impact on this. So, oops, and I forgot my minus 12 here. This was y minus 12. I had my minus 12 up there. So y minus 12 is equal to 3x. 12 minus 12 is 0. We don't cancel things. That's not a mathematical operation, but uh, sometimes you use that as sort of a, a vernacular shorthand in, in math class. Now, I've also got x multiplied by 3, so I'm going to divide by 3. I, I could write divide by 3, and it's usually easier to write it as a, a denominator there. And whatever I do to one side, I, I divided the whole side by 3. i got to divide all the other side by 3. Now, 3 divided by 3 is, is 1. 3x is divided by 3 would be just 1x, okay? So I can divide that out. So ultimately, what I'm left with here is x, and usually we like to put our lone variable. Again, y and x are variables. Variable, no, not any fancy math or physics word. What's the root? Varies, right? Something varies if it can have multiple values, and 
I could put multiple y's in to solve for an x or vice versa. Okay, so usually we have our loan variable over on the left hand side. It's just a convention. And another word that we're going to hear a lot, and a convention is simply an agreement. A whole bunch of physics geeks get together at a convention and agree to do things a, different, a certain way. A math convention, an English convention, a, a physics convention. When I use that term, it means a way we all agree to do things. And we usually agree to have the loan variable on the left and any other stuff on the, on the right. Y minus 12 over 3 and it varies because I could put y equals 1 and figure out what x is. I could put y equals 2, substitute that in there and solve for x. So that's hopefully a little bit of an intro into algebra skills we're going to need. And we're going to carry on from there with other math skills.